Imagine having to walk on your toes all day long. Ladies, we already know how this feels. But imagine coming home, taking off your gym shoes, and still having to walk on your toes. Welcome to Orthopedics Today. I'm your host, Sipo. And today we are discussing the prevention of an equinus contracture. is derived from the word equine, which is the Latin term for a horse. And as we all know, horses walk on their toes. Therefore, an equinus contracture is defined as the inability to dorsiflex the foot to a plantigrade or a neutral position. Joining us in studio today to shed more light on this topic is a fifth year medical student from the University of Cape Town, Tehofato Gobodi. Hi Tefo, very nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us Hi, today. Hi Tefo, thank you so much for having me and thank you to everyone at home for watching. So Tefo, before we really go into this topic, can you quickly just take us through the anatomy of the lower limb? Sure. The leg has four muscle compartments, lateral, anterior, as well as superficial and deep posterior compartments. It is essentially the muscles of the posterior compartment that are involved in equinus contracture. These muscles include the superficial muscles, gastrocnemius and soleus, both of which attach to the foot via the Achilles tendon and are involved in plantar flexion. The tibialis posterior muscle in the deep posterior compartment is also commonly involved in equinus contracture. This muscle attaches to the foot via the tibialis posterior tendon and is also involved in plantar flexion. These muscles are innervated by the tibial nerve, which is a branch of the sciatic nerve which has its nerve roots at L4, L5, and S1. It is important to remember that weakness of the muscles in the anterior compartment causes dropped foot and not equinus contracture. Wow, Tepo. Thank you so much for that comprehensive lesson in the anatomy. So, can you please take us through as to what causes equinus contracture? Sure. Equinus contracture can be grouped into neurological, muscular, and post-traumatic. Neurological causes include cerebral palsy as well as, as well as an L4, L5 injury to the spinal cord. Under muscular causes, you have muscular dystrophies, tendonitis to the Achilles or posterior tibial tendon as well as club foot. Post-traumatic causes include burns and fractures of the foot. What are the management strategies that are used to prevent equinus contracture? Equinus contracture can be treated or prevented. Managing it is a collective effort between physiotherapists and orthopedists. Speaking of, we visited our local physiotherapist at UCT. So take a look. Hello everyone. My name is Mulugahe Mugozo. I'm a final year physiotherapy student at the University of Cape Town. Today what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the physiotherapy management of the equinus and tell you a bit more about AFOs that, that, that is standing for ankle foot orthosis and the indications thereof. And lastly, I'm going to show you a couple of practical stretches to help you deal with your equinus foot. So the function of ankle foot orthosis is that it supports both the ankle and the foot. And there's another type of ankle orthosis known as the knee ankle foot orthosis. This also extends to the knee. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on the ankle foot orthosis. How it supports both the ankle and the foot is that it maintains proper alignment of the affected joints and thus impacting on the biomechanics of the hip and the entire body. And the indications for the ankle foot of thosis is that it's used for foot drop and fixed contractures and equinus club foot. Specific physiotherapy management is that we would, if uh, the equinus is caused by tight muscles, 
he would then stretch it with a couple of stretches held for four times 45 seconds, three sessions. Hi everybody. So right now we're going to commence with the bed exercises. Madam, can you just have a Okay, so the first stretch that we're going to do it's called passive dorsiflexion stretch. You stabilize on the talus, you put your other moving hand on the hind foot, okay, and then you push the ankle into a more retro into a more plantigrade, which is a dorsiflexion position. Push up until where your stiffness is limited and you hold it for one, two, three, four, five. You're doing good. 45. Usually for a stretch you would hold it for 45 seconds and you would do it 4 times. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to hold it for 45 seconds times 1 breath. Next stretch that we're going to do is that you put the foot, it's called passive eversion. You still stabilize at the talus. Okay. Now you hold at the midfoot and then you evert the foot. You hold it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forty-five. Doing good. So the next stretch is called a Mulligan's mobilization. This is a much more functional stretch. What we are trying to achieve with the stretch is that we want the foot to have more dorsiflexion range, as you all know that with the quietness, dorsiflexion range is often lost. Okay? So what I want you to do, I just want you to hold to the wardrobe. Imagine as if you're pushing the cupboard away from you. And then bring this leg to the back. Then this leg forward. Here we go. And then you push. Okay. So the stabilizing hand, the stabilizing hand is, no, the moving hand is supporting here at the gastrocnemius. Stabilizing hand is supporting here at the talus. And the movement is going to comprise of this shear force, okay? So push one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good, relax. This ex this functional activity, you would do it for 10 counts twice a day because it's much more progressive. Thank you. Now that we've seen how the physiotherapists um, prevent equinus contracture, what is the role of the orthopedic surgeon? So orthopedic surgeons commonly place plaster of Paris cast around the foot with equinus contracture. In a person that has sustained an injury to the foot such as a fracture, um, host of Paris casts are also commonly used to um, treat the fracture. However, it's important that this cast is placed in plantigrade position because if it's placed in an incorrect position, that can also predispose one to developing equinus contracture. There are also surgical me measures of treating equinus contracture. These include tenotomy and tendon lengthening. In, with tenotomy, an incision is made in the Achilles tendon to help loosen the contracture. Lengthening is similar to a skin graft where you take a piece of a tendon from elsewhere and add it to the Achilles tendon to lengthen it. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today, Teho, and best of luck for the rest of your studies. Thank you, Zipo, and thank you so much for having me. So that's all we have for today's show. Be sure to join us next week where we discuss the rise of female orthopedic surgeons. I'm your host, Zipo. Be kind to your bones.